Welcome everybody, I'm Carlo from the MonoRender team. MonoRender is an architectural visualization studio settled in Italy. Uh, here's uh, our website. Um, I have recently re been reached out by um, someone who uh, saw uh, some of our videos about uh, building stadiums. We have uh, two kinds of video in our YouTube channel and has asked me to help him uh, building a stadium with uh, uh, lots of seats and uh, a telescopic uh, outdoor seating system and um, uh, most of all uh, he would like a football stadium that look like a viking longboat from the outside he has also sent me some images that i've collected here you, you can scroll through them is uh, uh, it, this is a viking longboat and his idea is to um, place three of them, uh, one next to each other, and uh, uh, fit a stadium inside their uh, body. So I think we can uh, use this uh, one as a reference and start the modeling. The, um, for this project, I thought it would be helpful to use um, an alpha version of Blender. So I've downloaded the 3.0 alpha candidate here. And uh, uh, that's the one I'm going to use. Uh, so uh, you can see here on in the bottom in the, the top uh, right the, the version of Blender. Uh, this file has already some folders that we usually uh, that we agreed with the team uh, of MonoRenders to keep uh, our project tidy. But you really can change things. Um, uh, in our setup, we have a model folder where we place all the things that we call structure and uh, the furniture inside. There is one for the vegetation, one for the light. This one in purple is the for the reference image. So, for example, if I would like to uh, use this one as an image uh, reference, I can just drag and drop it on Blender, you can see that the image has been placed right uh, where I put it with the, my cursor. And now I'm resetting the location and rotation by pressing Alt G and Alt R. As you can see uh, on the um, bottom right, you can uh, inspect the key I'm pressing. For example, if I'm scaling, you see the DS. Uh, just remember that this uh, Springcast key software uh, is not um, um, showing the uh, shift button. So you have to keep an eye if uh, the uh, um, if the, the letter is being reported as a, a capital letter. For example. Uh, you can see that now I'm, I press Shift A and the A was reported as a capital letter. Now, um, I think we can uh, maybe uh, open another editor, um, the image editor, and drag and drop uh, the other image so we can have all ready to be inspected. I think that this one are enough. Uh, we'll save it from, for, for later. So uh, now I'm going to uh, uh, enable full screen to work better. And uh, I uh, select the empty image right there. And I lower the opacity of our image so we can model with this image as a reference. Let's save this file as a um, Viking Stadium. 
version 1. Okay, you can see that we have a, um, a football field with some uh, um, reference here. You can see that it is about 90 meters and from 45 to 90 meters. Uh, but let's take this proportion as it was the one uh, that uh, were suggested by the user. So I'm scaling the um, adding a plane and scaling it on the X and on the Y and adjusting his location somewhere like there. Let's put it on in the model section. And now we'll work on this model. Now, when you have scaled it in edit mode, you can see that the scale here is kept uh, uniform. That's what we uh, would like uh, to have. And here the dimensions are uh, instead um, uh, referring to this object. So what we need to do is to uh, scale uh, both uh, objects here till uh, we have the dimension of uh, this object uh, more or less equal to the one uh, reported here. So I'm uh, scaling uh, using uh, the 3D cursor as a um, pivot point. So the, the, they just stay there. Okay, let's scale it one more time. And one more time again. So perfect. Now it's about 95, 96. Uh, so I scale it. Uh, let's scale it uh, 10 times, uh, 100 times. To scale both, uh, I don't know what to do. Let's just put it this way. Perfect. Uh, now I'm applying the scale for these objects. Okay, so now um, the, the scale has been applied, so uh, the objects works like we have uh, scaled it in edit mode. Uh, this uh, is crucial in uh, modeling with modifiers because these modifiers are being applied before the scale is being applied. You can see um, what this means uh, when you work with bevel. You'll, uh, uh, you'll experience a different bevel uh, because uh, the, the scale may not be uh, uniform. But for the moment, it doesn't regard our uh, interest. Let's place it on the uh, on the origin of the um, of the um, of the system. Okay, so now we have this plane, which has the uh, shape of our football field. And we have um, the plane right in the middle of the scene. Let's call it uh, football field, okay, so, uh, soccer field. field. Okay, let's give it some room. So I am uh, extruding. Uh, um, this object and scaling a bit. Now I'm deleting this face. The result is now a, um, a, a, an external boundary, like something like this. Now I bring it back to this level. You can see that my uh, setting for the uh, snap is to vertex. Uh, use, I'm using the closet closest so now i can feel uh, i can put it uh, where i want now i'm scaling this way i just want to uh, give it some rounder corner so we can fix that let's we select everything and extrude it uh, a bit select these edges and then we are going to bevel this edge okay 
as we did before, shape 0.5, so we have a perfect round, perfectly round corner. Can increase the width, let's see from above, maybe less, something like this. And the, the number of segment we should abound in 24. Okay. Now we can get back in vertex uh, selection mode, select the top for faces, vertex, and then we have our round corner. Perfect. Okay. Uh, now we can extract these edges, shift D to duplicate the edges, P to separate the selection. Okay. And uh, now that we have the uh, this mesh, let's call it uh, field profile. We can uh, convert the object. I'm going uh, here the lo um, the local view. I select object and convert it to a, a curve. Now we have a curve. This curve by default is 3D, but uh, we need a 2D cur curve. Okay, perfect. And now we start uh, by creating um, shoot world origin by creating the um, uh, the, the, the stairs where, where the seats lay. So I'm adding a plane just to start. I collapse all the vertex in a, a point, in a, a single point, extrude it on the Z axis by uh, 50 centimeter and on the Y axis about uh, one meter. I think that's enough. Okay, this will be our uh, profile. Uh, as we want to control the height, we can add an array modifier with relative offset. Uh, let's put on the Z one and on the Y another one. Okay, perfect. And um, as you can see now, we can increase the number of um, the number of steps. Now that we have our um, stairs, uh, we just need to extrude it uh, by a value. I think that something like 0.5, what one meter. Sorry, um, my distance, I can extrude it by one meter on the Y uh, ax axis, okay. So now I can, I can add another array modifier that uh, uh, allow me to uh, extrude this uh, uh, geometry toward the X axis. And then the latest modifier is a curve modifier, we pick as a curve object, the um, uh, this this uh, the, the field profile, and you can see that now if I choose as an array length instead of fit uh, count the fit curve option, and I pick the curve, you can see that now uh, all these uh, stairs are being. Uh, placed uh, along the curve. Here you can uh, see that the, mm, uh, the object are being stretched. To avoid that, you can simply uh, add uh, another uh, some loop cuts like this. Okay, you can see that now here is it's being uh, it's less stretched. We have lots of uh, unused loop cuts around here, but we can easily clean them up uh, later. 
So I think that for the moment uh, uh, the, the, the stadium part uh, we can keep uh, this way. Okay, maybe let's increase the number. Perfect. 15. That's the way to go. And we can get back. Okay, we can see from this uh, 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 this planner view that more or less uh, we are uh, approximating the uh, shapes uh, that we were given as a starting point. Let's save this file with another name. So by pressing this plus button, you, we, you can in, in, increase the latest number of the file. Okay, and let's call this one main stairs. Perfect. Now we can focus on the uh, boat. To uh, build the boat, I'd like to start uh, by working on this. Uh, um, profile so you can uh, see that the profile is curved so instead of modeling it with the um, uh, uh, um, uh, a mesh i'd like to start with a curve object uh, the object as we were uh, we are working on real meters is uh, uh, very small because the default is one meter you can increase it on the bezier but it doesn't really matter at the moment because uh, this curve that you want to use a 2d curve uh, you can also scale the handlers uh, um, while you are working i think we'll need three handle at least only three okay you can select this handle rotate place it here you if you see uh, some uh, uh, if if you see that this the shape is uh, too blocky you can increase the number here of segment move just a matter of moving and scaling it's all done by eyeballing the shape okay maybe this one should be a little bit rotated perfect okay let's decrease the number a little bit let's go for 18. now to uh to get this other profile i'd like to convert to this object to a mesh type so i can see the individual vertex i'm extruding it on the z-axis in order to be able to extrude the faces along their normals so we can approximate uh, the uh, this uh, this curvature here we will work with the, some manual uh, adjustment let's delete the faces we don't need okay and uh, we adjust this extrusion in order to fit the curve below Okay, let's work with quads, so we don't join this one here. Okay, maybe we can smooth the curvature here with smooth. Vertex, smooth vertex, okay, perfect. Now we move use this as 3d cursor rotate okay now we got the profile uh, the ship is more or less uh, symmetrical so i think that as, if we use this point here as a origin 
set origin to 3D cursor and we take advantage of the mirror modifier. Okay, perfect. We just need to adjust it slightly. Okay. Enable clipping and extrude this one. Okay. We have uh, achieved the this profile. Let's extrude it a little bit on the Z axis on this side and another bit on the other side. Okay. Here a face has been uh, no, we don't have a face. There is no face. Perfect. Okay. Maybe we can move this one a little bit down. Okay. Let's enter edit uh, the local view mode and start giving some materials to our object. So I switch to uh, the materials uh, um, preview. Here in this editor, I enable the shading editor and I create a new material called, called wooden beam. It's a, a um, I am using the principal shader, uh, adding a texture image, image texture here, connected with the base color. Let's pick an image. I have a link here to my texture folder where I kept uh, all the texture I'm using. Um, wood, it's here. And we can maybe use this wooden plank uh, or this wood uh, here. Let's go for this one. So, okay. Uh, by default, uh, I don't remember which coordinate is using. Let's expose the node with the Control T because I'm using the um, uh, the node wrangle add-on. And let's open here another kind of editor, which is the UV editor. Perfect. And uh, uh, we can mark as seams this edge here, this edge here, this one, this one. Okay. Mark seam. And this one in the middle, which will be hidden by the view of the user. So. Control E, mark seam. Now I'm unwrapping the mesh. I think the unwrap is quite good for this kind of task. I'm rotating this one here and scaling a little bit. Perfect. Now we see that we have given to our uh, profile a wooden look. And I think it's quite good to start. Let's hide this one and get back to the main view. Now let's save the file and tackle the uh, pro uh, the profile here, the section. Uh, the plan is to um, to uh, work on a single section. So. I'm, I'll work in this area here and then I'll replicate the section along this part of the ship. Okay. Uh, always um, and then I'll shrink them down till reaching the zero point. You can see that the ship has this kind of shape. We build just one section here, a big section, and then we'll shrink it down toward the end. Uh, maybe we can hide the mesh 
uh, here to better work later. So let's start by placing a, um, the 3D cursor here, more or less in the middle of this section. I'm adding a plane. Uh, I enter edit mode and scale this plane in order to fit the uh, the shape. You can see now that uh, after I rotated the object, I can no longer scale it on the uh, is um, the axis parallel to the, uh, the, the edges because I'm using the global transform orientation. If I switch to normal, you can see now that if I press S and X, I can scale it uh, from uh, um, the, um, the orientation of the face itself. This is quite handy when you work with something like this because I'm um, uh, I'm working with the, the orientation of the object at, and I can ensure that uh, the, um, the extrusion has been um, done along the uh, sorry the scaling has been uh, done along the, um, the the faces of the mesh itself so scaling on the y axis I'd like to, to as uh, here we, these are more or less uh, some wooden planks I like to um, build them um, separately as a separate object because uh, uh, it'd be easier to texture them uh, in, uh, differently one from each other. That's the way we are working uh, with the separate objects. The only downside it, it is that we cannot uh, select uh, all of them in one go, but uh, we will have to make a box selection. Let's make a big blank here. S, Y, OK. S, Y, S, X. Let's keep things as tidy. You can see that here the section has been uh, cut off, but uh, in reality we need uh, everything. So let's just uh, make an hypothesis of the, uh, the lower part of the boat. Okay, let's enable a, a mirror modifier also for this section okay, to see where we reached the middle. Okay. Let's start bending our beams toward the center, something like this. Okay, I think that this part will be occupied by the profile. Let's work on the roof now. Okay. Maybe now I can switch back to the global orientation mode. Okay. Let's put this one in front because I was struggling to see where the line exactly was. Okay, something like this. Extruding again and extruding again. Let's enable clipping. Okay. Now our section is more or less uh, done. Let's fix uh, the uh, symmetry so okay and then I move everything a little bit on this side okay here's our section
I save this one as a backup and uh, uh, I send the backup to our bin folder where we keep uh, uh, the meshes that they may be useful later, but uh, we don't need it at the moment. And here I call this object the section, the call the main body. Okay, I bring it down here scale it i have to ensure that uh, the origin of this object is aligned with the origin of this one so we can use the same mirror modifier to do that uh, just uh, open the pi menu with the cursor options uh, cursor to selected and then for the other object selection to cursor so now the origin has been um, uh, satisfied they are on the same I scale the object more or less uh, to the uh, extent I want this one should go a little bit down and then this one here yes. let's keep this edge as a guiding reference and for the bottom part uh, Uh, let's increase the visibility. Okay, the, the, we should keep uh, this line here as a reference for our boat. Here is shrinking down, maybe um, we eyeballing uh, that. No need for a reference edge. So let's turn the opacity down okay and then rotate this mesh okay uh, now let's apply the rotation and we have to adjust our uh, mirror modifier option now what i would like to do is to extrude the whole section uh, so uh, each plane becomes a, um, a polygon, a, a parallelogram, and um, we are building the uh, ships. As we are going to deform the section along the uh, x-axis, we need some loop cuts. So you can see that I extruded the uh, first section by uh, three meters. For example, let's let's make it five five meters, and uh, I can uh, use the common repeat to uh, extrude the region move again so if i press shift r you can see that uh, the section is being extruded another time let's do it one more one more okay, and again till we reach this section and here we can start curving our section to match the curvature of our profile. To do that, what we need to do is to uh, pick the 3D cursor as a scaling point. Uh, when we click, the 3D cursor is being projected to the um, uh, to the, 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 the plane, the first plane that he encounters, and we can check that uh, is more or less on the Z axis because the um, the object is the um, is this uh, plane and is being projected on the plane. So when I, uh, the result is that when I scale this one here is scaling uh, and keeping everything uh, uh, mirrored, okay? Because I, if I'm going to use a medium point to scale, you see that. Uh, uh, he has not been scaled uh, uh, toward the middle of the scene. So 3D cursor. One thing cool of the using the 3D cursor is that we can give some rotation uh, using uh, the cursor as a, a reference point. Okay, I think we can start bending our ship. Let's try to keep uh, this extrusion more or less uh, similar to 
the, the one before, so about five meters. Okay, let's rotate and scale it. Okay, you can see that now I'm slightly going below, extrude, scale it, rotate, move, extrude, scaling, rotating, Okay, let's repeat this process sometime. Okay, now that we have reached the, um, this part here, we need to follow exactly these lines. So I'm matching the line above and the line below. Okay, here as the curvature is coming we have to increase the number of loop cuts here toward the end. Okay. Okay. okay, we have something to adjust, but the shape is more or less correct. So this edge here should go lower and we should rotate it a bit. Okay. Also, this, this one is a little bit strange. Like this. 
you can see they should always point inward. Uh, this one is not pointing inward. Okay. This one is pointing too much inward. Okay. This one here. Bring it down a little bit. Also this one here down a little bit. This one here down a little bit. Okay, it's better. Now let's enable uh, our uh, proportional editing. and bring everything to match. Okay, we have some strange orientation here. I think that this is a good starting point. Uh, now let's parent uh, the, uh, mm, the main beam. Uh, yeah, to the main body. So we can uh, start working on uh, the the section of the boat. I'm rotating the boat 90 degree and applying a mirror modifier also on the X axis. Now let's bring it up here where we can see the curvature that it should be uh, applied. And uh, once we are here, uh, let's give to the image some more uh, more opacity okay let's rotate it uh, rotate it on the center by 180 degree perfect now we should follow this curvature here to do that just uh, set the cursor to the uh, selection Okay, so now this is our point of uh, uh, scaling of our scaling point. I select all the edges. Make sure to be in the uh, X-ray selection. Set the 3D cursor as a scaling point. Uh, enable uh, um, proportional editing by clicking this icon. Now, when I press S and Y, you can see that I can influence the scaling of many vertices instead of the selection only. So, scaling on the Y, okay, and now I'm extending the, select, the, the extrusion towards the end with a smooth interpolation. Same thing, I can do it uh, here for the, um, the other part of the ship. I think we see it better here. So I rotate uh, it uh, by 180 degree again. It's like resetting this rotation. Okay, so now I see that the profile is the one right here. So let's pick uh, all this vertex here, this and start scaling on the y-axis, something like this. Okay, perfect. And you see that we are matching our uh, profile here. There is a little bulge here on this section. I think, let's try to fix it. Okay, you can see that now I'm moving the edges right here. Okay, another point is this one. We have a strong 
section. So let's try to fix it. S Y. Okay. Something like this. The result, if we uh, go into the local mode, is this kind of ship. Okay. And I think this is a good starting point. Let's save these objects here. I'm duplicating them and sending the duplication here in the bin so i always have a duplication of the mesh if i need it uh, nice thing of this kind of setup is that uh, we can easily uh, let's hide the modifiers there we can easily um, unwrap our mesh to do that uh, we are going to set this one here as um, uh, our phase uh, where we calculate the coplanar phases too. So also this one here, and I'm marking this seam like this. So this will be our, um, we can also make a vertex loop, but I think uh, it really doesn't matter. So I'm unwrapping this one here. Okay, this one are the faces on the front. And uh, mm, let's take the faces on the back, which are this one here. Okay, so I'm marking them as seams and I'm wrapping. Where are they? Well, we cannot see. Uh, I was not in uh, vertex uh, x ray. Mark seam, I'm wrapping. And here are the other. Okay, let's hide these faces, all the faces there. Uh, now this one are uh, connect. These faces are connected with an edge loop. So I, if I select these edges, I pick the edges inside because uh, they are hidden from the view of the user. Okay, something like this, and then I mark this one as a seam. Okay, uh, I can unwrap them, obtaining a, a good uh, unwrapping of each one. Uh, so when I use the same material for the wooden beam used for the, the main part, you can see the difference from the top part, which has not been unwrapped, and the bottom part. Now we just need to scale uh, everything by a factor, and we got our wooden beam. Each one uh, has a different... Uh, uh, orientation because uh, they uh, they are different uv map but uh, they all share more or less uh, the same uh, um, the same uh, uv so uh, we we did uh, this this beam here let's hide them we do we also do this one here so this one here mark seam uh, hide this one, mark seam, hide this one, what I did, mark seam, hide this one, then we have this one here, this one here, this one here, Okay, I think we are done. Uh, we have this one. Okay, perfect. Unwrapped. 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 Okay. 
and envelop the, the orientation of this one here is not 90 degree. Five, five. Uh, okay, this is obviously uh, also uh, reproduced on the other half of the mesh and uh, above. Okay, so now if we inspect our mesh, you see that we have a nice uh, looking uh, Viking boat as a starting point. Perfect. Let's hide this one again. Let's save this file. File, file save as stadium. Okay. Uh, one nice thing of this setup is that you can also enter edit mode, go right here and uh, take this edge loop here. Uh, let's hide, uh, let's take this whole beam and uh, invert selection and hide everything else. You can go through each one of this beam and uh, rip it apart on one side. So uh, then you can uh, create uh, an interruption. So it's like the, 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 the beam start from one point and uh, uh, reach the other. So if we add a, a bevel modifier, uh, let's uh, decrease the effect and disable the clamp overlap okay maybe the, uh, we have to increase the effect a little bit 0.1 oh. okay the scale of the object is not uh, is not being applied that's why we cannot see the effect let's get back to one centimeter okay uh, we cannot see it 10 centimeter. Okay, now we see it. You can, uh, you can, for example, create uh, uh, some uh, difference in the beams. Alpha five. Okay. So, for example, this one start there. Uh, let's split this one here. You can see, create a face, hide part, create another face here. Okay. The result is that you have a, a wooden beam that starts from this point here and maybe uh, reach this other point. So you don't have long. Uh, longer wooden beam but smaller uh, beams which are may, which is probably more appropriate for a, a realistic a realistic construction okay you can see now that we created a, a different uh, beam let's go from here to here and you can do it uh, as many times as you want for example let's make another i rip the faces with the v command with the f command i create one face then i hide the other select the the this loop cup and create it i l alt h and i get back select another loop cut rip it create a face hide select create another face and hide let's do it also here uh, rip it face hide select face and hide another one here repeat face hide uh, face once you have done this you can uh, to increase the um, 
the, the, the effect, select the, the whole thing and change the UV island so they doesn't align with the one below. Okay. You can see that now we have made a different uh, a different UV mapping. So the effect of the beam being uh, different from the other one is uh, increased. Okay, you can do this as many times as you want. For the sake of the um, tutorial, I think uh, uh, we can call it uh, a day for this kind of task. Let's bring this object back to the default position. I choose the uh, boat and I bring the boat so it lays on the bottom of the scene. Okay, let's save this file. And now it's time to duplicate the object. So I select both uh, objects and I duplicate it with Alt-D. So uh, the objects are kept on the same um, mesh type. Okay, something like this is fine. Uh, then what, what we need to do is to carve a hole in the body so we can place uh, uh, our soccer field on the inside. Uh, let's put the cursor to the world origin and uh, enable the soccer field. Okay where it is, is right there down below. Okay, you can see that uh, the sketch, the previous sketch doesn't quite align with the um, uh, with the, the reality of the boat because uh, the, the boats are um, they are curved so uh, the, the the field doesn't uh, fit inside. We can uh, slightly move up the soccer field. So I, we think that the, the entrance is at this level and the field starts here, something like this. Okay. Uh, and the stairs, they should be moved up by the same amount. So let's say that the field is about 4.6 meters from, from the Z. And uh, this object, uh, maybe it's better to move the, move the, the profile, it's not moving. So let's move the star stairs by 4.6 meters also. And also the curve, let's move it. Okay, so we have the main stairs. Okay, they uh, are slightly bigger than expected. I think that the solution for this kind of uh, uh, effect is just to increase the the, um, the size of each boat. So let's get back to here and point the 3D cursor as a scaling point and let's scale the boat till they fit the stadium inside something like this okay with the x-ray we can control the, the this effect fine i think it's good it's like they are slightly bigger um, but I think that we have no choice. Uh, let's hide our reference image. And now we need to carve a, um, uh, carve a hole for uh, the stadium. So let's uh, duplicate the main stairs here. Okay, so we have our profile. Uh, and apply all the modifier. So first of all, I apply the array, then 
the other array and then the curve with Ctrl A. Uh, you can apply it also by using this menu. So now the geometry has been um, created and I can uh, I forgot to um, to merge the, the, the to, to enable the merging on the array. So if I get back, you can see that here I didn't apply this merge that uh, create um, a single uh, mesh. Uh, it, it is not a problem. You simply select everything and merge by distance. You can see that uh, a lot of vertices has been removed. And then we choose this uh, this segment here, extrude it till we reach the height of the boat. So something like this. It doesn't have to be very precise. Okay. Uh, this is a good carving point. And uh, we really don't need to um, let's separate these segments. Okay. So now this is my polygon. I fill this face. Maybe we can delete some edges. Limited dissolve. Let's increase by 0.5 meters. Okay, we have some artifacts here. Let's try to fix them. Okay, it's just this vertex. I am dissolving this vertex. Okay, now we have our polygon. And I'm going to create something that approximate our uh, football field. So something like this. It doesn't need to be very precise. It's just to carve our uh, the, the, the top part. So to ensure that we are carving everything, I'm extruding it uh, also on the top this object is not being uh, should not be rendered so i'm disabling the render here and calling it boolean carving and now i select this uh, ship here and i add a boolean modifier picking the object here as a boolean uh, subtraction in order to see this on the um, on the scene i display it like a wire okay okay it has been carved maybe it's better to apply the bevel modifier after the booleaning Okay, we still have some issue. We'll work on that later. Uh, merge, everything should look fine. Good. Let's copy the modifier to the other meshes. Okay. Let's use the fast. Okay, fast is working better this way. And we have carved the hole in our ships. The nice thing of the Boolean modifier is that it is um, uh, interactive. So I can scale uh, if I want. I feel if I would like to change something, I can uh, uh, make some uh, adjustment. For example, here. I'd like to carve more this uh, part of the, the of the ship because uh, at the moment uh, we are uh, seeing uh, some shapes moving uh, toward the object. So to do that, 
I just select uh, all these edges here and I scale it in order to hide them. Let's just check that nothing. Here we created some holes, uh, but uh, it's not uh, a big problem because it will be a part of the ships that uh, we are not going to see. You can see that this ship here is causing some uh, Z fighting. To fix that, just move the ship a little bit higher. So we have a single front selection. Okay. And I think that uh, the main infrastructure for our uh, stadium has been created. Let's save this file as another increment. Okay, the stadium is a little bit on the left size as requested in the reference. I don't know if you remember, but uh, at the beginning here the stadium is not right in the middle is more uh, on the left side because we uh, you have more space here for other infrastructure let's keep it that way and now it's time to place some seats here on the parts here we have some some other fighting it really doesn't matter because here I'm going to extrude it along the normal like this to create a maybe it's better to separate this object and now extrude it along the normals so we have a different object that we can extrude also on the other side Yes. Okay. Perfect. And I think now it's time to work on the seats. Let's hide everything here. So I'm hiding the model and I'm working on the scene collection. And uh, let's start by creating a plane. And then we change the dimensions. So the planes here are uh, this measure. Um, we built a um, um, a, sta a staircase that is uh, 0.5 for one thing like something like this and the height is 0.5 however it well it was one on this side okay mm, this is just a dummy because uh, uh, i'd like to create a seat let's keep the origin here in this point or maybe it doesn't matter so um really it really doesn't matter let's create a seat that is 40 centimeters 8.5 centimeter 0.5 right there let's apply the scale and then um we are probably going to see a uh, not very. The seating will not be very much detailed because uh, um, uh, they will be seen from afar. So I'm going to model a simple seating, something like this. Okay. I think that this should be fine. Let's make some edges always also here. Perfect. So this is our main seat. We can delete this one. 
and I'm calling this one say it, say it. let's give it a material well, let's use the, the the wooden beam we used before and unwrap the object so uh, we have uh, we can use the uh, box projection unwrap I think it will be fine okay here it is our uh, seat and now we go back to the model this seat can be hidden I think go back to the model here uh, if you remember we duplicated the stair object so we have a stair that is um, here this is a, uh, we have a stair here that is uh, uh, still uh, with modifiers and this one is the one that will keep uh, this way but we have also a, an instance of uh, the same uh, object baked for this one here let's uh, merge the objects here we have some duplicated uh, let's fix that so this one here i'm going to delete the faces delete the faces okay i'm painting this area and going here and i'm going to select this edge loop select this other edge loop and bridge edge loops okay now I can select each one of the row where I want my seating to be in. Okay. And then I separate this selection. So we have one object which has only the uh, the place where the seats are i'm calling this one here uh, seats ensemble and this other one main stairs okay let's tidy up a bit a little bit our uh, file so we have the main stairs that uh, are using the modifier we can keep this one here as a, a backup mesh in the the bin folder we have this object here that is our wall boundary wall boundary wall we can keep it here the, the boolean carving we can send it in the bin because we don't uh, need to see it and then we have the main stairs that uh, are uh, the place where the seats should go so um, let's get back to our seat ensemble let's hide everything okay and we see that we got this mesh uh, let's uh, tie the things up a bit, for example, by running the limited dissolve modifier, which is uh, deleting the edges, uh, the vertices that are along the same line by a maximum angle. Let's decrease the angle by 0.1. You can see that uh, the, uh, it's not being uh, applied because uh, it was too low. 0.2, 0. 0 0.2 okay what i want is to keep this curvature here but i would like also to have straight line here that are easier to handle okay now that we have cleaned things up a bit we can convert this object in a curve type mesh you can see that uh, no different no apparent different has uh, appeared okay and now it's time to open our um, 
geometry node editor. Let's fix this. Maybe it's better to have the geometry node editor on the bottom. Okay. Now that this object is a curve, we can no longer um, edit uh, the object. So we need to create another object. Uh, so let's uh, create a simple cube. Let's call this one seats curve. And the, this cube seats seats ensemble. Okay. I'm creating a node. And for this node, uh, first things I do is to disconnect the geometry like this so we don't have any geometry right there but what i want to do is to use this curve so i in the input panel i choose ob uh, object info and i pick the curve seats now if i place it around here we we cannot see anything but uh, that's because we firstly had to uh, create uh, some um, some uh, other node uh, first of all is the um, the curve subdivide oh, we also have the mesh to curve but um, curve subdivide okay once, uh, sorry, it was the curve two points, not curve subdivide, curve two points. Okay, you can see that now the curve uh, has been uh, um, um, uh, has been converted to the uh, points. They are. Let's apply the location so the points uh, are being bringed on the uh, location of the curve and then what we can do is to add a uh, instance so point instance there and we use our seat seat okay So these are the point. I instance the seat. It's not working. Why it's not working? because the seat was hidden. Sorry, I forgot it, that it should be, should be seen. OK, uh, now we have to fix the rotation. So we go back into the point uh, rotate. We have to rotate before point, uh, creating the instance. So if I now rotate it by 90 degree, our seat align with the, the, this part. We have to also rotate it on the Y by other 90 degree. Perfect. If we want the seats to align with the, the edge, we have to use a, uh, another, uh, another, um, another command with point translate. And I can scale it. I can move it uh, on this part here. The nice thing about this setup is that you can, uh, instead of using count, use the length. Now the, uh, the length is very narrow, but if you 
um, if you use this length, you can see that they are evenly uh, distributed along the curve, each one at a, a set distance. Now you see a problem here on the edges. That's because we are uh, rotating uh, not in the right direction. The right direction is not object, but the point orientation. Okay. You can see now this cool effect of uh, uh, this uh, point uh, of seat distribution along the edge, which was an issue that uh, I was not able to uh, fix with the previous uh, uh, version of Blender, which uh, doesn't have animation node. Uh, we can mix the seat um, one uh, near each other. Okay, so like this, perfect. And the nice thing is that uh, if I now select the uh, curve, I can create uh, different, uh, um, different, um, uh, different um, portion of our stadium. For example, if I now um, edit this curve, but editing the curve is not uh, very easy, so I prefer to convert the curve again to a mesh, which is easier to handle. But in this case, we have to go back to the uh, curve ensemble and uh, add to the object, which is set curve, uh, a converter that take our curve and uh, as a mesh and convert it as a, another curve. Okay, so now we can work on, uh, let's bring uh, these objects here in the main scene, like that. Uh, so if I now select the seed curve, I can edit. For example, I can create here uh, uh, with the B sect here, I can create a separation um, I'm making room for some stairs like that. Okay. If I now select this part of the mesh, and delete the edges, you can see that now the, um, the, 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 the mesh has been converted to a curve. The curve uh, has uh, seats placed on, and then I can uh, edit my curve as I want. There should be also right on this side edges. Okay, and now I can go on uh, simply creating other kind of uh, uh, sectors. I'm using the BSEC because the, we don't have an edge loop between the the, 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 the different part. So to, to cut everything on one go, I'm using this tool. Uh, another option can be the uh, knife tool, but I don't know if it works for this kind of task because uh, there is no um, there is no no face. We only have edges. Okay. Median point. Okay. I'd like to have a single section right like this. Okay, and let's cut also here. and also here. Uh, 
you can see that in this way you can easily configure uh, your state uh, your uh, your are arena your stadium uh, to create uh, uh, the sector that you want and uh, the nice thing is that uh, the Uh, the seats up the update themselves to fit all your uh, all your creation. Okay. Like this. Now I'd like to create some variation here. So maybe. Let's hide momentarily the seats. I'd like to have a stair that... So I, I pick only this part and I bisect only this part here. So something that go from here. To... Here. Okay. Let's do it another time. So let's take only this mesh here and dissect from here to here. Okay, now it's difficult to see where, what I did. You have this one here, this one here. Ah, let's delete this one. Okay, more or less. Maybe less than more. Okay, something like this. Uh, we can uh, let's uh, delete this one here and copy paste uh, this one here. Symmetry, symmetrize uh, from uh, minus y to y. Okay. Bisect Bisect from here. Bisect to here. Okay. Perfect. Uh, let's add more variation by deleting some of the. Uh, let's do something uh, correct. So I am going to delete this one here. This one. This one. And this one. I'm. This one. No. I'm selecting some row to give room for uh, people to reach the other parts. The curve, I like to keep them. OK. 
Okay, here we give three selection, and here just one. Okay, so these are the sector I made. Let's enable seats back again, and you can see that the seats are uh, keeping the, the place. If I would like to, uh, here, we, here we have a flipping of the seats. That's because uh, the, the curve has been uh, changed. To fix that, maybe I need to extrude it on one side and then delete the vertex. No, let's flip the normals. No. Here uh, we have some sector where is right and some sector where is not right. To uh, simply uh, fix that, I think uh, we just need to separate curve seats curve here. I'm going to separate the uh, the one which are flipped to the from the one that are not. Luckily, we we can easily see it uh, from the shape of our seats so let's select the curve like this okay so we have this one here that are flipped this one here that are flipped this one are right right flipped right flipped right right flipped flipped and this one are right and this one are flipped this one flipped Okay, I think that is fine. I select everything and separate this selection. Now that is separate, I can create another seat ensemble. I'm duplicating this one here. And as a seat curve, I take the seat curve that has been duplicated, which is the one uh, with the zero, zero. Okay, they are flipped as you see here. But if I take the curve and uh, reverse it, you see that the, now this object has been brought back to the uh, right position. Uh, let's go back here. And um, I'm sorry, this, uh, this geometry node is the same that is working on the seats ensemble. You see it here as the same name. So for the second one, you have to disable it, go back to the, to, to create another geometry node. So now we have the, this one here that is controlling the seat ensemble reversed and the one here that now doesn't need this one and the seat curve should take the first one. Sorry. This one was needed. Is this one that we don't need it? Seat to curve. Seats good, and now we have our stadium. Okay, perfect. Now that we placed our seats, I think that uh, the main modeling has been uh, done. Uh, now it's just a matter of texturing and uh, working on uh, the details of the scene. So 
thank you for uh, spend some of your time with uh, us um, i think this file uh, can be uh, downloaded freely uh, i have to check where to upload it but uh, you can expect it to uh, get this file from uh, some parts um, and i think that uh, that's all folks thank you and see you next time